And very welcome back to the show. Paul Kenny, our pharmacist, is with us. 185715900. You can text uh, 51551 if you have a question uh, for Paul or email mooney at rte.ie. Paul, we were talking about the 50 cent charge. And just to clarify for people who are texting in, a lot of people are texting in to ask questions about that. People saying that they were told it was going to come in in September. That comes in on the 1st of October, 50 cent per item that you get on the medical card to a maximum of 10 euro per month but you're not exactly sure what happens after 10 euro a month. That's correct, but the, the, the textures are quite accurate as well in, in so far as originally the HSE had intended to introduce this charge in September, uh, but uh, you know, as you can see, you know, near the end of September, we're not even organised for October, really. You know, I mean, how long does it take you to update your systems? Well, it's, it's you know, we need to be given the information. So, you know, it, uh, as of the first of October, the charge is in place, uh, unfortunately. But, um, you know, the HSE still obviously are working very hard at trying yeah. to trying to get it in place. But but maybe let's hope it takes a bit longer for it to be sorted out, and then people will have a bit more uh, freedom uh, as well. Uh, what, what, I, what, I, what I would say is, you know, any question on it, uh, or there's, is there any query on it at all? Um, you know, go into your local pharmacist. You know, we, we, we're standing behind the counter. Uh, we're approachable. We know the system, and we're free. So, you know, we're, we're the yeah. we're the access and the face of the health service. So, just get into your local guy and or girl and uh, and ask the question. They can help you. The questions coming in on particular uh, drugs, generic drugs, um, and we we discussed an example, Losec, which is Omprazol. Um, you don't know what's going to be on the list of drugs that are coming down in price yet, or do you know? We don't know. Definitively, we, we, we do not know. I mean, we, we can have an idea of maybe, you know, some of them, but no, we don't have the definitive list. The HSC will be publishing a list in due course, but, we, we, you know, they haven't... Caroline so in Ringsend wants to know, she pays 120 a month for one inhaler. Is it going to come, come down in price? You'd, you'd have to know the inhaler, would you? Uh, I would, yeah. Um, the li I, I could probably stab a guess at it, uh, given that it is so expensive, but the, the likelihood that that particular inhaler is, is coming down is, is highly unlikely. It, Which inhaler do you think it is? It's probably a serotonin tight inhaler it's a brand but uh, uh, in the main uh, what's coming down is uh, our, our generic medicines um, I would imagine that, that inhaler is not a generic okay um, this caller says that they'd be better off putting 50 cent on antibiotics it's a bit much to charge uh, people who are taking tablets on long-term illness, what's it going to happen to people who won't take their tablets the hospitals be overcrowded that some dear drink has? So she's saying someone who's taking something for two weeks or a week, maybe put the tax on that and don't put it on somebody who's uh, taking long-term um, medication. Would you say don't put it on at all? The evidence I shows know, I mean, that... I, I, you know, we, we presented various uh, ways of, of providing the same saving to the government, um, you know, but the government have chosen to go down this route, which is of the, the levy. I mean, there are things that, uh, that are being done abroad. Like in the UK, there's a thing called a medicine use review, um, which is where, um, you know, a customer can uh, call into their pharmacy and sit down in the consultation room that we all must have by law as of the 1st of November uh, and go through all uh, the medication and make sure it's all being taken correctly, they're not taking anything incorrectly, they're not taking any medicines they don't need, that they're not... Can I talk to you about that? that? You mentioned a thing called polypharmacy to me before. What's polypharmacy? Polypharmacy is just a term that refers to, uh, to, to um, individuals that take a lot of medication and in some instances you can wind up taking uh, one medication as a result of taking a different one, you know, so it just it knocks on. So that's exactly the sort of thing that, uh, that could be reviewed in a medicine use review. Um, Which will be done in hospital or done with you? Done in, in the UK, they're doing it at pharmacy level. You know, the, the, the government pay a fee to, to pharmacy. Uh, I, this is what I'm given to understand now. Again, it's not being done here. I, I believe there might be a pilot on, ongoing in Dublin at the moment, but um, it's, it, it is where pharmacy, a pharmacist can either call to somebody's house if they can't get out or whatever and go, just go through all their medication and, and uh, or else bring it in. Now, to be honest with you, Jay, this is something I do on a day, daily basis. You're looking anyway, at when, how you know? drugs interact with each other and one cancels the other or causes another problem. Yeah, well, th this is what I I would consider I do for a living. You know, if somebody comes in with a prescription and ha has, has a big list of tablets on it, I, I my job, I would consider my job uh, to examine whether everything is appropriate. But why isn't, the, them, why isn't the doctor doing that or the consultant doing that? Oh, well, they are. I mean, everybody's doing it. I mean, that, that's the, 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 I suppose, the idea of the layers is to make sure everyone is... Oh, we, we as pharmacists are the final safety net. You know, we uh, communicate with hospitals, with GPs, and with the patient. I mean, it, it's communication and relationships are, are, are what, what makes a pharmacist I just, I just wonder you know. when you have a consultant who's dealing with somebody who has a kidney problem, who also has a heart problem, who also has arthritis and maybe has athlete's foot, 
that they're all looking at each other what each other's prescribing as well that's the fear I would have yeah well I mean that, that has to be done you know people do have multiple conditions like that and you do have to attend different specialists to, to have those things examined they all correspond with the GP uh, and the, you know the GP then uh, can pass on prescription to the individual who then goes to a pharmacy and the pharmacist then will examine all the medication make sure there's nothing clashing that they're you know that they're aware of how they should be taking their medication and that they're, you know that they're taking it correctly they're using inhalers correctly you know all that sort of thing so would you be happy if somebody arrived into you with a big bag of everything they're taking and said listen Paul will you sort that out and make sure that's that you're happy with everything that's there well to be honest with you Shay, that's what I do you know that that's what pharmacists do you know uh, we are approachable people and and we are free so I mean we are going to be the first port of call hopefully uh, for, for people at home that have any questions because uh, you know we're easy to talk to and, and we're you know we're, we're on your doorstep and we know the system you know, yeah. which is kind of important. And we can refer you, uh, you know, or steer you in the right direction. You know? Here's a, a text that says, I have athlete's foot. I uh, was told about a medication, but because I have a liver trouble, I'm not allowed to take it. Do you know about that? Well, I, I don't know the person's athlete foot problem. I, I, I don't know what medication they're on. <laughs> I'm sure we could get them to go into your treatment room and from Orange. Yeah, You'd yeah, love but, to see that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, athlete's foot is a fungal infection, and um, you know, depending on the severity, it can be treated with a topical antifungal. There are um, uh, oral antifungals which do have a lot of interactions with various medications. So, ask your pharmacist. Read the label. Read the label. The label just say, ask your pharmacist. <laughs> <laughs> I take Nexium for my stomach. Is there a cheaper alternative that I could be? Uh, actually, that's kind of topical. Nexium, uh, as it happens, uh, last month or the month before, came off patent. So there is now a generic medicine uh, made by Pinewood uh, down Bally McCarby. One, one? one at the moment, I, I, I think. Although it's uh, made in Bally McCarby, let's promote that promote yeah, for yeah. <laughs> uh, There's only one I have, and it, uh, Nexazole, which is a generic form of Nexium. It's about. I know, it's about 20% cheap or something like and is, that. And is Nexium OTC over the counter No, now? no, these are prescription medicines. They're prescription, but yeah. remember, you know, this list at the moment, what's the difference in the prices? Nexium is probably cheaper then, is it, at the moment? Um, there's a, because Nexium the weird way things no, work. No, no, it's not. Nexium is, there's kind of an anomaly about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the, you've picked a good one. Uh, the... Uh, the manufacturers of the generic have got around the patent so in actual fact I incorrectly told you that it's off patent I think it's actually officially not off patent for a couple of years but this uh, drug is the same drug and it's the same strength and it has uh, uh, you know uh, there are there is equivalence there so they've reversed uh, engineered it yeah, exactly. uh, the kids have just gone back to school and I found oh, 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 I found in five out of six heads in my house have lice oh, 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 oh. What's, oh, I can feel the itch starting all over me already what's the best treatment there is now there's lots of brand names you sell particular brands people sell other particular brands what would you say are the best ones out there uh, the well, what I would say to you, I mean, your reaction is kind of typical of, uh, of, of quite a number of parents. <laughs> I think Jesse's uh, like me. <laughs> well, particularly first, t you know, parents that have only come across it for the first time. Head lice is a really common thing, particularly for the primary school kids uh, going that kind of age group. Um, it's it's not related to hygiene at all. Uh, it, it transfers, you know, it transfers readily from head to head. Basically, they don't jump, they don't swim. Uh, they tr tr transfer just by running quickly. So if your if your heads are in contact, so you know primary school kids uh, in, come in on with all, groups they come all that, that, that now you're a father of two <laughs> if they come home with head lice what yeah, do you do very easy treatment so there, I mean there are pesticides that treat Durbac M Lightlier Prioderm are, are probably the three brand leaders um, and uh, you know one or two of them are just a 15 minute treatment one, there's another one's left overnight All again ask your pharmacist they'll guide you and, and, and tell you what the, you know what the best treatment is what, or most about, appropriate. Uh, what I would say is the most important element in the treatment is the combing afterwards so no matter what uh, treatment you use it's the combing getting rid of the egg and stuff that's uh, that's kind of loitering around the place, you know. There's uh, no magic bullet, is what you're saying. There's, there's th something to kill them and smother them or do whatever they do, yeah, but yeah. you've actually you, got to sit with the child on your there. knee yeah. or sit in the Put a bit of conditioner in the hair and just comb through it. And, and, and you said, is there a special comb for that? You've also got to treat everybody in the family. Um, what? You've got to treat everybody. So, so if, you see, if you've got three kids and one of them comes home with head lice, you've got to treat the three of them. And ideally yourselves, although kind of parents tend to be not very good at following that oh. advice. Yeah. Oh, God. I can feel it. Is there a generic for Lexapro? There is not a generic for Lexapro. What's Lexapro? Escitalopram is the name of the drug in it. It's kind of a, um, it's a der derivative of Cipramil. It's kind of the next step along. And... Uh, 
It's an antidepressant. It's used for various, uh, you know, various different conditions, but primarily it's an antidepressant. Okay, I just uh, we start we started now the avalanche of of school illnesses as well. Worms. There's things coming in about worms. I feel like I won't be able to go out anymore. Worms. How do you treat worms? My my child came home and there, there are worms in the toilet. Uh, worms are very easily treated as well. It's still literally a single oral dose of, uh, you know, of, of, a, of a liquid like Vermox uh, for younger kids, or it's in tablet form. Again, you got to treat the family, and simply doing something like washing your hands before eating or something like that prevents the cycle uh, continuing. So. Uh, you laugh. You laugh, and uh, kids might have an itchy bum at night, and that that sort of thing is a symptom of it. But uh, again, what is it, it's the itchy, itchiness at, in the in the in the bottom at, area at night time? Yeah, in particular, uh, you know, there's a uh, egg laying going on. So I've uh, been too graphic about it. But uh, no, well, look, I mean, these are yeah. if you're a parent, or if you're an yeah. aunt, or your uncle, yeah. or your grandparent, or a carer, yeah. you, like you're gonna have to face these things. I'm, I listen. You do, yeah. If I, I ever went home, because I spend all my time behind the desk at my job in RT, as you said earlier, um, I <laughs> well, I'm gonna get you after this. Um, I, uh, I'm going to have to face it too and I know Linda faces these things on a regular basis uh, we'll take AA Roadwatch with Arwen Foley